Hello, and welcome back to the channel. If you're looking for a place to broaden your painting skills, or even a relaxing channel to maybe even fall asleep to watching artwork, you're in the right place. My goal here on the channel is to equip you with the painting skills that you need to turn those regular old gray 3D prints into something amazing, and also create an environment that allows you to unwind after a long day. Recently, I painted these two Ninja Turtle prints, Leonardo and Raphael, but as you can see, I'm missing the other two. And this guy, he's not a part of their group. But first, I want to talk about paint real quick. It's kind of a saying here on the channel that you don't need expensive art materials to make amazing artwork. So, this bottle of paint here goes for $2.67, which is super cheap. Especially when you compare it to its smaller counterpart, which goes for $0.54. Cent. When you calculate in how much you're actually using each print, you really only spend in paint like a dollar, maybe two, if that. Now, if you can't tell, today we're going to be making Michelangelo, which is the orange bandana's brother. Just like last video, we're going to start by painting everything black. Reason for that is, I like a darker mood, and when we paint over the top, it'll kind of give it a more moody effect, in my opinion. Now, I want to start with the shell. The uh, reason I want to start with the shell is because, just like in the last video, we're going to be doing the technique, which is kind of famous on this channel. It's kind of my main technique when I paint uh, dry brushing and the shell in particular has a super cool dry brushing effect. To start off we're going to be making dark brown by mixing our brown color which is nutmeg brown and then our black color. Paint the entire shell in dark brown and then grab your nutmeg brown and come back and do a dry brushing over all of the shell part. It's okay if you get a little bit on the mask or even the ribbon that's coming down the back of a shell because we're just going to cover that up later anyways. Once you are done dry brushing the shell part, you should get something looking about like this. I don't know why, but I just really like how the shell turns out on this print as well as the other two Ninja Turtles that I did. You will then take your silver paint and paint this mask. I decided to go with silver instead of gold just because I feel like the gold and the orange didn't have enough contrast. so. I went with silver instead. Next up is this rope that goes across the back of the shell. To do this, I mixed yellow and brown together and then a little bit of black to kind of get a mustardy yellow that I painted the entire rope in. And then I came back with a little bit of just yellow and brown, mainly yellow, and dry brushed across the top of the rope to add some highlights. Next, we're going to mix up some orange and black um, to kind of make a darker orange. For some reason, it captures as brown, um, but we're going to paint that across these two like sashes across the back of his belt. And then once we've done that, we'll just take the regular orange and we will dry brush across the top. Uh, make sure that you go perpendicular to the wrinkle lines in the sash. That way you kind of capture those wrinkles in the paint job. Next up, using this white and then mixing a little bit of black in there, we're going to make a very light gray. You don't want just straight white because that'll really stand out. And then we're going to paint these beads across the back of the shell. Um, I went with white just because I thought that it would bring a lot of contrast to the shell. And we're going to be painting white on part of his garments as well later. So I think the white beads will make uh, for a good touch. This technique that I'm about to use is to kind of dole out some of the shiny, bright silver color on that mask. Essentially what I'm creating is a wash, uh, like a homemade wash, by just mixing some water and some black acrylic paint. You want this to be a little bit runnier than the actual paint itself, but you don't want it so runny to where it runs off into other parts of your print. Um, and basically all you're going to do here is cover the entire thing in black and then come back with a paper towel and uh, kind of dab it dry. Next up is to do skin tones and just like we did in the Kratos video we want to gather every piece that's going to have a skin tone in it. We don't want to mix up several skin tone colors because then you'll have like his arm in one shade of a skin tone and then maybe his face is in a different shade. So I find it best to mix up one batch of skin tone color and then paint every piece that has skin tone in it. To start, I picture Michelangelo as having a more of a yellowish green type skin tone, um, whereas like Raphael is more of a darker green, like strictly green. So 
what I did here was mix yellow and green together and then a little bit of black to kind of get the dark shadows. And then we'll come back with a yellow green that I mixed together to create the highlights that we will dry brush on. Once you have dry brushed the entire body area, you should get something resembling this. Uh, if you got that, you're doing great. Keep it up. Once you have done all of the skin tones, now it's time to move to the mask where we take our orange and some black. Just like we did with the sashes across the shell, we're going to do the same thing with the mask. So orange and black to create a dark orange for the shadows. And then we're going to come back with a regular orange and do a little bit of dry brushing perpendicular to the wrinkles to create a neat effect. Once you have done that, it is now time to move to his eye. With a very steady hand, you're going to paint on his eyes with um, a very light gray by mixing black and white together. And if done correctly, you should get something looking like this. Don't be afraid to accidentally mess up his eyes. You can always come back in with that orange and kind of correct the mistake. Oh, and don't forget to paint the teeth here as well. I just used the same white as the eyes that I did on the teeth, so... Make sure you save a little bit of paint for that. By mixing up a little bit of yellow, black, and brown, you will create a base layer for the underside of the shell where his chest is. And then coming back with just brown and yellow, you'll mix up some highlights to dry brush on. I do want to take this moment to thank Cephon66 for this insane design. The reason I'm able to capture detail in the chest like this is because he put in the work to create those details on the 3D model. It certainly makes my life much easier than those details not being there and me having to paint them all in by hand very meticulously. Not to mention, I feel like I could watch dry brushing techniques all day long. It's so satisfying to me. What do you guys think so far? Think it's looking pretty good? I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you're happy with yours too if you're painting along with me. There's a little piece of leather coming off the sashes on each side of the chest. Um, all I did was mix up a little bit of black and brown, painted that real quick, and then came back with the nutmeg brown, did a quick dry brush over the top, and then painted the two buttons in silver. Now it's time to paint the famous nunchucks that Michelangelo uses. Um, for this, I really liked the idea of having gold etching. So what I'm doing here is just painting the entire thing in gold. Make sure that if you're going to do this, you really get down in those cracks with that gold paint. You don't want so much paint to where there's paint that just clogs up the etching uh, because then you won't be able to dry brush over the top of it because you'll just cover the entire thing in black. But really get down with that gold in the etching and then when we come back, we'll dry brush black over the top of it and you should get something looking around like this. So for the rope, I actually decided to go with a white rope. So what I did was mix uh, white and black together to create a light gray. And then I come back and dry brush on just white. Don't mix any black in, just white. Now it's time to gather all the pieces that are going to require brown. Um, so for example, his elbow pads and then I guess this is a wrist covering. I don't know. We're going to be making both of those brown. Uh, we're also going to be making the wrappings on the bottom of his feet brown as well. However, to separate our browns, we want to paint different shades of brown. So I'll just kind of talk you through what we're doing here. The So for the pads on his knees, elbows, and wrists, we're going to do dark brown by mixing brown and black together and then come back with just the nutmeg brown and do a dry brushing over the top. This should be what you're looking at once you get done with that part. And then for the wrappings around his ankles, you're going to leave the dark brown underneath those wrappings and take brown and white and mix a light brown together. And we're going to just dry brush over the top of those to give it kind of a different shade, different tint of brown than what's on his knees and elbows. Now there is a little piece of armor on the top of his foot that is held on by a rope. Um, for the armor, we just painted that in silver, left it at that. And then for the rope, we did the same thing that we did on the ropes for the back of his shell. So now it's time to move on to his garment. 
To start off, we're going to be painting the entire thing in a dark orange by mixing black and orange together. And don't be scared to kind of cover things that are not going to be orange in the final product. We'll end up painting over that in a little bit. So kind of just let it fly on this, paint the entire thing in dark orange, and then take your regular orange and dry brush the entire garment. With orange and red and colors like that, those are very transparent colors. So you may end up having to go over the piece in like two coats when it comes to the dry brushing of highlights, maybe even three coats. Just go over as many times until you feel happy with the piece. Now by mixing the same colors that we did for the rope and the beads on the back of the shell, we're going to take a light gray by mixing white and black and we're gonna go across the trim of his garment, go around the entire thing and then come back with just regular white and dry brush across the top. This particular trim on this garment gets a very satisfying dry brushing. Again, don't worry about the belt that's holding his garment up. We'll paint over that in just a minute. To paint that belt, we're going to take some dark red by mixing black and red together. And then we're going to come back with just regular red and dry brush over the high points of that rope. I'll mention it again, but red is a very transparent color. So just like the orange, don't be afraid if you have to go over a couple of times, maybe even three times to kind of get the effect that you're looking for with that red color. For the M belt buckle that he has, all I did for this was paint the entire thing in silver. And then I grabbed my black paint and painted the M in black. Then I came back with the gold paint and painted the M in gold. Now it's time to move on to the easiest part of this entire piece, which is the base. The base is entirely stone and is extremely detailed. So all I did was paint this entire thing in black. And then I grabbed a kind of medium gray by mixing white and black together and dry brushed the entire thing. It's as simple as that. Now that's all that's left to do is assemble the piece. Once you have it fully assembled, it's time to break out your camera and give a best attempt at what is a B-roll.